back to Frank's Model Aviation Workshop. This is episode 24 in the Carl Goldberg Ultimate 10-300 biplane build series. This episode we are going to continue with the finishing process of the Ultimate biplane. We're going to get everything disassembled including all the elevators, ailerons, everything's coming off. We're going to start the uh, filling and sanding of the uh, airframe to get it ready for covering. I'm also going to build the wheel skirts. We'll get those built. They're going to need trimmed because these are a little too long. So we'll get those built and sand it up and uh, hopefully by the end of this video we'll be ready for the covering for the next video. It'd be nice to uh, get this thing done because I've got future plans that I just can't wait to get to. So we'll also be doing some super fill on the cowl and wheel pants. Maybe get the canopy trimmed up and painted. Uh, that might be during the covering episode. I'm not sure yet. But we'll get it going. But before we get started, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that notification bell so that you can be notified of future episodes of this build series. And please like and share my videos. I'd really appreciate it. And it just might help somebody out. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, two things have to happen before I can disassemble any further. The cabanes here need to remain rigid until I get the superfill underneath and that's hardened. And the other thing is we need to build the uh, landing gear skirts before I can take the pants off. I want to get them trimmed to the right size and get them glued up and shaped and whatever so we can get uh, a pre preliminary uh, fitting of the wheel skirts. So we'll get set up and build these wheel skirts first. Okay, so as you can see, it's going to require a little bit of trimming. What I'm thinking about doing is first trim off these just enough to get those little divots there out of the way and see where that leaves us. And then I'm going to leave the bottom or no, I'm going to leave the top as is, but I'm going to start trimming the, the bottom until I can get it in there just right. So let's start with that process. Okay, so we will, first off, let's mark this. I'm going to try to keep it even. So I'm going to take an eighth of an inch off the top and the bottom.
Take that. I need to mark. <laughs> I should have left those marks on there so I can at least know where the landing gear strut's going to be. So I'm going to transpose these marks onto this one. All right, let's see what she looks like. I think that looks really good. It gives me a little bit like a 30 second on the top and the bottom for spacing. So I'm going to be good with that. And this has to be basically within the plane of the uh, airflow. You don't want it to be cocked off one side or another because it will affect the flight characteristics of your airplane. Almost better to leave a wire wire landing gear, but I kind of look like the look of the wheel skirts on there. So now that I got that one, I'm going to trim up the other side and then we'll get back and uh, do the balsa. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is line this up. I'm going to cut it a little bit long. Give me something to sand off. Do the same for the back side. And obviously, the back side is going to have a lot of trimming off, so that's fine. And these will be silicone caulked on.
that's one. Now we'll do this one same way. I think what I'm going to do is glue a part to here because there's not enough balsa wood there. Same with this side. That's just going to complete the wheel pant or the wheel skirt. There. Let's go ahead and do that same thing to this. All right. There's the two wheel pants done, or wheel skirts, I don't know why I keep calling them pants. And they will be ready to be around one end. The, I think the aft end stays square. We'll square off the ends and uh, we're ready to move on with the uh, finishing part. So here's how big of the divot I had to make in my firewall and my plywood base here so what I think I'm going to do I'm going to use this leftover 3 16 and I'm going to cut a piece big enough angle one side so it, it matches the angle of the firewall put it in there and we'll glue it in place and we'll I'll have to of course sand it to the right radius so let's start by cutting a piece and trying to angle it the right way the first time. I wonder if I got any extra. There we go. I got a nice piece of quarter inch I'll use. Okay, I need a piece at least an inch wide. So I'll take and measure an inch off the edge here.
use my magic ruler to get the perfect 90 as long as you can keep from moving it now we'll cut that I'm going to use my permagrit bar here to just try to guess the angle. So I'm going to put it up to the firewall. Let's see, no, nope. a little bit steeper. little bit more so what I'm going for is that angle that's basically right on the money so I'm gonna glue that in on the inside and then we'll shape it Gonna play hardball. Oh, I see. I am in the way of my slot, so I gotta be careful. Oh, okay. There's a uh, slight glue fillet right there, so I'm going to chamfer that edge a little. Try it again. Let's do this. Let's I just cut a notch out of it. See how that fits. And just like that. That'll work. So let's I think I might try to leave it in there and put the glue down in here like this. Let's make a huge glue mess. So now I'm going to basically just shape it. And give it a little bit of a 220 sand. Pretty good. I like it. So I'll just soften up this edge just to make it look nice. That will have to be fuel proofed, of course. So now that we got that done, we're going to work our way that way. And that means mixing up some super fill. So I'm only going to mix up enough super fill just to go around this cabane just a little bit. Both, both this side and the opposite side. And that shouldn't take much. So let's get the mixing. 
Now this super fill, it gets mixed two to one. As you can see, <clears throat> the hardener is separated, so I'm gonna have to gonna have to stir that up really good. Probably both of them. So I'm gonna start with the uh, actual stuff. So we'll just hopefully it's still good. It should be. You can't mix. Don't use the same stick for both the hardener and this because it will uh, ruin the whole batch. So I'm just gonna stir this up. Last time I used this stuff was on my P40 build. Oh, I got grams, I think. Okay, ten. Oh, let's get. Let's make it even ten grams. All right. So that's that. And this hardener, it smells like ammonia. So I'm gonna put five grams. So it'll be fifteen total. Okay, 15, so we will stir this up and get the super filling. This stuff is really easy to work with. You have two hours of working time with it. So the way I like to do it is put it on where you want, wait an hour, Come back and put some alcohol on your fingertips and shape it up the way you want it. And it will uh, harden just like you want it. A lot of times you can almost, this what I'm doing here is not going to require any sanding, but you can almost shape this with the alcohol fingertip to the perfect uh, shape where you don't even need to sand it. Okay. That's ready. I'm going to start with these. Now remember, I'm going to come in there with an alcohol fingertip. It's going to, I can take some of that off in there, so I'm not worried about a weight issue. I'm going to go ahead and do this other side, so I'm not going to swat, switch the camera. The whole idea of this 
super fill is to lock in those cabanes so I can take those cross pieces off without having to worry about them moving after I put filler in the other side. That should be more than enough that I need. All right, we'll leave it at that. I'll set an hour timer. Okay, it's been an hour and we are now going to smooth this out using some alcohol and a wet fingertip and paper towels to clean your finger off. Looks pretty good. Now I'll do the other side. Okay, there we have it. That's enough super fill. When it hardens, it's going to lock these things in, your cabanes in, and I'll be able to take these cross pieces off and that piece and be able to fill in with balsa filler around there to make that look nice and neat. So we'll get back at it tomorrow, or actually on my days off, I gotta go to work tomorrow. We'll get back at it on my next days off, still this video of course, and we will uh, start, super, start filling in for, with balsa filler. Okay, now that we have all of the radio and stuff installed. Got our wheel pants things made and everything. And the super fill is cured on the cabanes. I'm going to go ahead and take all these cross pieces off. And we will start the initial sanding where we're going to take all the high spots off initially. And then we are going to also round the bottom edges toward the tail. This I'm going to keep square up underneath here. But we'll round them off and then we will put the filler on. I don't like to in, put the filler on and then do all my sanding because the sandpaper will take filler out and you'll have to reapply the filler you know where the sandpaper removed it. So if you round it first then apply your filler, let it harden overnight then sand just the filler off. You won't have to reapply the filler. So that's the way we're gonna do it. And we'll put some filler around the cabanes here where there's open spots. It'll all be really nice when it's finished. Uh, it'll make for a nice uh, covering job. I won't paint these sections until after it's covered. I will paint this top piece prior to uh, prior to covering. So let's get set up and do some sanding in fast speed. And then I'll show you what I did.
front here. Those babies are locked in solid with that super fill. So I'm going to break out the filler, balsa filler, because that's all we're going to be doing on the uh, fuselage now. The super fill on the fuselage is done. I just want to do that on the inside. So I'm going to break out the balsa filler. We will uh, fill in around the cabanes. I'll probably tape off so I don't get a have a whole bunch of stuff just stuck in there be hard to get get out so I'm probably going to tape off the area where I want the filler and uh, apply it same with the tail area I'll probably tape that off too and we will uh, get to filling like all these areas like this all that's got to get filled in all these seams here that all get filled uh, but uh, everything's pretty much sanded. I just need to fill and then sand again. So we'll get set up and do that. Okay, before we get started filling, I want to discuss the stuff that I'll be using. This uh, Hobbyco Hobby Light filler. Gonna need some paper towels and a spray bottle of some sort or some way of moistening the paper towels. So the way I like to do it is wet a paper towel moisten down the area that I'll be you know putting the filler on because if you put this stuff on dry wood the wood's going to absorb the moisture out of the filler and it'll want to pop off or break off as you're sanding so I found through trial and error that if you moisten the area area that you want to uh, put the filler on and you put the filler on you let it dry overnight there is no way that's going to come off you can sand it perfectly just the way you need it and I've been doing it that way for years so uh, it's a tried and true method it works so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna tape off the fillets for the tail and put some of the stuff on now this area down here <coughs> it's gonna require filler pretty much down to the middle of this here and this whole upper part of the fuse side will have filler just to kind of soften this edge of the uh, ply and then we'll just go through and just fill in all these holes you know all the where the formers meet and that seam right here if there's any but uh, we'll get all that stuff taken care of and we'll set this aside and we will uh, go ahead and start on the tail and the wings because I fill in all my pin holes and everything I don't want nothing showing through the covering when I cover it. When it's covered, it's going to look perfect. So let's get set up. I'll uh, initially show you how I'm going to do it, and then I'll put you in fast speed so I can just concentrate on getting it done. And then I'll, when I'm done, I'll come by and show you what it looks like. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to start off by taping off the tail. There's some areas on here <clears throat> on the stabilizer that need, you know, addressed, but I'll address that after we, once we get the filler on the, fill, on the, uh, where the fillets are going to be. I already tack ragged it, <clears throat> so it's dust free. So we'll start off taping this off. Now, as far as <clears throat> the fillets and stuff go, it's up to your discretion how big you want them, how small you want them. So uh, just, you know, use your own discretion for that. There's no real set rule, per se. <clears throat> so 
So I'm going to cut some tape here. Let's see a bit easier. I'm going to push this off a little bit. Cut this in half. It's got to come off. So I'm going to do this to the other side. This will make it a lot nicer when I go to sand it. I won't have so much to take off. tape from the back side because I want to fill in that these two holes <coughs> where the plywood has a gap so that'll take care of that and okay now I need to to do the front side so this area is basically going to be taped off so that I don't put a ton of filler where I don't want it because it it kind of is it's hard to uh, sand off on a soft you know balsa wood I don't want to cause any issues so I'm just going to put enough to fill those gaps put it behind here because that way I can control it even better so it's just gonna fill that area there I don't want I don't want like a fillet around that I just want it filled in <coughs> this will make for a lot nicer finish when you go to cover it.
think that's what I'll do first is these fillets and fill in here. And then after the, after we get all the tape off, I'll uh, do the sides and all the former holes and stuff. Get ready to cut to a fill. This stuff here, I don't even know if you can get it anymore, but when I bought it last time, I bought like six of them. So I have like two or three left. So hopefully I don't go through them. Shouldn't, but we'll uh, give her a go. Oh, yeah, it's still fresh. Okay. So first things first, I want to moisten this area Now it looks like I'm making a fillet there, but that'll all be sanded off. And because I have that super fill <clears throat> underneath the top here, it will uh, keep that from cracking out. That's that. Now we'll move back here to the fillet of the tail. Now a lot of people are using that DAP filler. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called. Plastic wood or something like that. Uh, I've never used that, but I'm hearing that it's just like this stuff. So if you can't find this, you can try to use that stuff.
No need to hold in the back. I know I could, the covering will cover it, but that'll just drive me insane. Okay, here's what it looks like so far. Looks kind of crappy, but once it's all sanded out, it'll look good. And here's what I did with the uh, cabanes. That'll all be sanded smooth. Then once it's covered, I'll tape off around the covering and spray it blue. One place I forgot is right there, so I gotta get that real quick. Okay, I got all the, got my wheel skirts sanded to shape. They're ready for covering. And I got all my control surfaces filled and uh, they needed to harden before I sand them. So what I'm gonna work on now is these interplane struts. So the trailing edge are beveled, the leading edge are rounded. So I'm gonna work on beveling them. The way I did them the last time is I just took and followed this angle here for the bevel part. Just lightly score it on both sides. Or lightly mark it, I should say. Make sure whenever you do this that you have the correct side because you got to follow the airfoil. Trailing edge is more straight I'll go and mark all my trailing edges first. And we'll bevel them before we round the leading edge. Off camera, I softened these edges here with some sandpaper just to kind of like radius them just a little so they're not as sharp looking whenever you uh, cover. So let's, I'm going to use my permagrip bar to get this bevel. Hopefully, I can get it right. Well, I'm not going to use that, it's too big. Let's use, start off with some 80 grit. Switch over to 220.
So basically that's what I'm going to be doing for both sides. Just softening that a little bit. So that's pretty good. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but you like to try to get it as perfect as you can. So we'll do the back side the same way. All right, there's the bevels on the trailing edge. <clears throat> now, I'm going to work on doing these leading edges. We're a little, they're a little trickier. Just take your time and just round them over. Try to follow the contour. Decent. Pretty good. I don't know if I want to go any further than that. It's pretty good. So we'll leave that. We'll go on the <coughs> top side here. I like to start with 80. Just kind of start the round. And I know you can't hardly see what I'm doing, but I gotta be able to see what I'm doing. <laughs> I'll take you off the tripod and show you what I got here. That's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to take and radius this here real quick, just a little. It's just to make the covering look smoother.
And I'll show you this one and I'll do the other one in fast speed. So basically, chamfer on the trailing edge and just round the leading edge. So that's one. We'll do the other one in fast speed. Two completed interplane struts. They still need drilled for the, uh, you know, when you hook them up to the tabs. They need drilled yet, but uh, they are done as far as I'm concerned. I'm just smoothing the wood out just a little bit. Looks really good. I'm happy with it. And I radiused all the sharp edges off. But that's it. So next up, we uh, are going to fill the dings in, uh, they could probably fill the leading edge of these balsa wood pieces. Let's do that real quick. Leading edge of the inner, right here is kind of ratty looking, going to fill in a little bit. Too bad, but it'll make for a nicer cover job. Stack them over here with my parts. We are getting closer and closer to finishing this thing. Still got to super fill the uh, wheel pants. won't be too bad I'll do the mask off like I did on the uh, cabanes all right let's get set up to do some wing work Okay, this is the top wing. <clears throat> it's, it requires a little bit of attention. This one trailing edge is not as wide as it needs to be, so it needs a little bit of filler to make it look nice. But I'm over here looking at all the stuff that needs attention. Are near almost ready for covering. I'm just kind of 
going over the whole structure. There's areas that need a little bit of filler. Especially right here. He's going to smear some on there. We'll let her dry and see what it looks like. And after I get these uh, wings filled, I have to put that fiberglass tape on it. So I won't be using the kit wings when I fly this thing. It'll be these lost foam wings because they turned out fabulous. Way better than I expected. That's that side. I think I saw a uh, <clears throat> screwdriver dent somewhere around here. Maybe I already got it. Oh, right there. Gotta be careful I don't bang it up against the dang light. Did that yesterday. Once we get all the balsa filler on here, we'll go ahead and break out the wheel pants and get that done.
And it looks like I'm putting a lot on, but it'll, most all of it will get sanded off. Got the top wing good enough. Okay, so we are now ready to begin the finished sanding of the ultimate biplane in order to get it ready to cover. So the things that I use to finish sand is various grits and sizes of sandpaper, 80 and 220 mainly. Then when I get down to the nitty gritty, I'll go 320. But to get it to shape, we're going to use 80 very lightly at first just to knock down all them high spots. Then we'll switch to the 220 to smooth it out really nice. But I put fresh 220 on my uh, sanding bars. And if you want to know how I did that, replace the sanding bar, I have a dedicated uh, video on tips and tricks. And in that video, I, I explain how to easily replace uh, your sandpaper on the sanding bars. And I have various uh, diameters of dowels, quarter, half inch, I think this is five eighths or three quarter maybe, but just for radiusing, like around the fillets and stuff like that. So we'll get set up and I'm initially going to knock down all the high spots with 80 and then we'll get to mess around that tail area to uh, get the fill it sanded in very nicely so let's get going we are almost done with this thing so I'm going to start off with the fillet area here and I'm just going to use this 80 grit to knock everything down to where it looks good and then I'll switch to 220 I'm just very lightly using it. The reason why you do it lightly is you don't want to put a lot of hard scratches in your balsa wood. basically done on that side. I'll go ahead and do the other side and then we will switch out and do something else.
I am done with the initial sanding of the uh, balsa putty. Got a little spot here and here that need a little bit of attention and a little bit on the tail down here. But other than that, I'm happy with my fillet. Looks pretty decent. But it's uh, coming along. So, got to wait for that to dry. So, while I'm doing with that, I'm going to do all the control surfaces, get them sanded out and ready for covering. We are so close to being ready to cover this thing, it's pitiful, and I'm starting to lose my patience, but I can't do that. Got to, like Sparky says, stand next to that sandpaper a little bit longer so that we can uh, have a perfect airplane. So we'll continue on with the sanding. Okay, now that we got the all the control surfaces and inter interplane struts sanded out, I'm going to start on getting these wings prepped. I'll uh, show you up close my process, and then I'm going to go into fast speed to get it all done. And if there's anything pertinent that you need to see, I'll stop at fast speed and show you the details. But really, I don't think there's much to see. It's just basically filling and sanding. So anyway, we'll get started on this and uh, get this thing ready for covering. So on these areas here, sometimes you get these trailing edges that are just, they don't match up with the trailing edge of the actual wing. So you have to put a little filler in. So it, I know it looks like a lot, but once I get it sanded out, it won't be. So I, I like to start off with 80 grit. And I know you're like, oh, 80 grit on balsa wood, but it's, I'm just, barely touching it just to get those high spots down then i'm going to switch to, to 220 grit i'm not even putting any pressure on this at all Now I'll switch to 220. You want to make sure you don't have any uh, balls of filler. Otherwise, it would dig into your balsa wood. Once I'm done filling the wing, I also have to put that fiberglass strip on these wings. So I'll be doing that as well. And I'm always changing directions. You go this way, and then go this way, and it gives you more even sand. <coughs> I 
I'm just getting over a cold too, so. Even though this is the bottom of the top wing, I want to make sure it looks just as good as the top. <clears throat> You don't want to over sand the open bays either because you can sand through the ribs. So I'll put you in fast speed and we will continue finishing up these wings.
Okay, the initial sand out is complete. I uh, found a few areas on the wings that I needed to put additional filler in. So I did that and uh, I think I might put a little more filler around this fillet area, maybe. But uh, other than that, the uh, sanding is complete. Uh, I don't know if you want to see the second sanding or whatever, but uh, I was thinking about just and in this video, because it's over an hour and a half right now, I believe, but uh, the next video that you see will be the starting of the covering. And I'm going to try to include the entire aircraft being covered, not just, you know, parts, you know, like one wing. I'm going to do both wings or whatever. You know what I mean? But uh, it's looking really good. Uh, I like the way it's turned out. Everything's smooth. Uh, caused a little damage on one of the wings I had to fix but it's no biggie but uh, we'll get this thing finished up I want to get this content up for you by Friday and I'm running short on time so I'll do I think I'll do the rest of the sanding off camera because it's just basically fine sanding next video we'll be doing the covering so if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that notification bell so that you can be notified of future episodes of this build series. And please like and share my videos. It just might help the new guy get his plane finished. So uh, until the next episode, thanks for watching.